adventure. <laughs> about to be adventure. It is the road less traveled, which we love. Relaxation, fun, seeing lots of wildlife, uh, hopefully uh, some of the people. It's great, I've been in over 120 countries and this is totally different. The mass, the size of the river. The lushness and the amount of water that they have here is just amazing. The ship is called Arapaima. The boat has 13 cabins with air conditioning, private bathrooms. It's just great to be in the moment here. I like river trips. I like to be on the water. The ability to get into an area that is not accessible by road is going to feel more exotic. And it gets us where we want to be. There are some other mushrooms that will need the help of the beetles or other insects. What happens is that they learn, they attract them. With trip leader is Eric Flores and he's, he's an excellent trip leader. He uh, really knows the area, he knows all the wildlife, he knows the plants. Um, he takes good care of us like a trip leader should. Keeps us in line, so yeah, he's been an excellent trip leader. We are talking about 90%, 100% humidity. Our leader and our naturalist are outstanding. They are wonderful. Anything we've wanted, they have helped with. We gonna go for piranha fishing. They started about 5:30 in the morning, and they worked till I don't know when. They, they worked very hard. Oh, we gonna go through this canal to go to a lake where we gonna start our fishing for piranhas. And this is gonna be a very good challenge for the driver too, huh? To go all the way through there. My question is, when you catch one. What do you do with it? When you catch one, you drop it us, okay? All right. Us, we will help you. We are fishing for piranha in the Amazon River tributary. It's very exciting. Where am I? You almost got it. Come and get it. Oh, I had it, actually. I got the first one. It's got a very strong jaw over here, oh, wow. right? But the one that actually is the most powerful is the low jaw, uh -huh. the lower jaw right. that press against the upper jaw, nice. right? One bite and kaput. Look at his teeth. Yes, he's a serious guy. Okay. In Africa, they get into the nest from the bottom. Yeah. While here in South America, they build a nest with the entrance on the top. We consider these weaver birds one of the most social birds that we have in the rainforest. And the reason why is that is because they can choose a tree and share with other species, but in the same family. To get it. It's beautiful. We've seen so far the dolphin this morning. I saw my first river dolphin and sloth. And birds and macaws. It's very and monkeys. Iguanas. The whole list. We saw anaconda. That was, that's one of the, the highlights, you know, and the remarkable part of the trip, probably, because we don't see anacondas every day, you know. So we saw an anaconda. It was right here, you know, in the warehouse of the of the rangers.
experience also the means of transportation of the people, which is the Dagal. Very easy, very nice. Cool. <laughs> Bob, don't do this every day. Oh, that's wonderful. So peaceful. Out with the birds. <laughs> We're going to see the shaman, and I think it's going to be really exciting. Blessing and good luck, huh? Yeah. For now and the future. That's great. We have a shamana, a female shaman, eh? which is not very common. She's saying that uh, she belongs to the Kokama and the linguistic tribe from the Amazon. And her name is Carola. The shaman was very, very interesting. Very interesting. It's this little smoke ritual and uh, uh, it's very, very, very enriching. Oh. It was wonderful. The lady is so gracious. The way she stands. Wonderful. I feel good inside, yes. We have a full day activity, you know, in the village, uh, which is called Day in the Life. Visiting the shaman, visiting, you know, the, 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 the village itself, interacting with the families and also having a, an interaction with the children as well. The kids are so great. And I think that we all enjoy it as much as they do. school interaction this was a lot of fun because we could all get involved and so did they, they the smiles were great it really was fun it's always fun visit the school and see the kids they're delightful como se llama saudi saudi not any saudi saudi yeah is it so saudi we're in mr wellington's house <laughs> he's got kawadi and a parrot and a caiman <laughs> It's always sounded kind of uh, forbidding, you know, like a place that you couldn't come, you only saw on the movies. And so it was like, oh, I can really get there safely and comfortably, and uh, it's an adventure. You know, it really, it really feels adventuresome, this one does. The adventure. Without the adventure, forget it. <laughs> See? Yeah. That's what makes the trip exciting. Silvia, yes, oh. Silvia and Pancho. Wonderful. And then you put on They have, the, you know, the back yeah. side or the belly side. Uh -huh. You know, you get to cut the belly side. Uh, Will you be eating it? I'll try. Out of my comfort zone, though.
Today is experience of visiting with family that's represented an indigenous group of people here and seeing how they live and they have a very positive outlook. Even though they're without all the comforts that we are, you know, take for granted. there uh, they're doing fine and so that I think right now has been the highlight for me for this trip they just harvest what they need for the day so they don't store it so that way it stays fresh it's underground they're trying to preserve their culture by having the elders show them how to do these things No, I'm going to eat the tail first. Mm. Uh. It's kind of tough. The skin is really tough. This is the outer exoskeleton. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I am watching you eat that. I'm trying to figure out what it tastes like. They're really good. Good, I'm glad you like it. Mmm. Go get some more. I need over you know there. why the fat, the fat is really, you know how fat is yeah. in salt? It's good. So, uh, Sylvia says what we harvested, those few roots, is uh, what we call here being cooked and mashed. So the saliva caused the fermentation of the manioc. It was the chewed manioc chicha. With this kind of environment, where there's so much to see and do. Having a small group, everybody can hear and see and try out things is really excellent. Wait, this way? <laughs> I made a joke out of it. Everybody's rooting for me. <laughs> biologist at heart. I haven't felt like I was impeded from doing anything. When I wanted to go learn about something, I could, even though it's something that's so weird. Uh, it's alright, it's alright. That's yeah. what she's up. So, yeah, well, it doesn't bother me. <laughs> you always tease me about it. I do tease you, but yeah, it doesn't bother me. Wow! You know, it's not as jungly as I thought it would be. I was nervous about it. Yeah, me too. The world is huge, and I don't want to be in this little bubble. And I want to see and feel. And in America, we're so fortunate. We don't have all these other things that I want to see and experience. I love to be in a different environment and meet people and learn about them. I have 10 grandkids and I like to be around little ones. They were there and they were interacting and playing with balloons and doing the hokey pokey and that kind of stuff is fun for me. Como se llamas? Emma. 
<laughs> I was born in the rainforest and I grew up in a small community that's along the Itaya River, which is one of the small tributaries of the Amazon. It's a place in the rainforest that we call a lowland forest. When the water levels really high, you don't find any pieces of ground. I born in a floating house, which is like a raft. So that's uh, originally where I'm from. Uh, as a child, my favorite part was the water. Being in the water all day, playing soccer and swimming every day with my friends, with my neighborhoods. Mom was so angry because she says, Edgar, when are you going to do your homework? You know? So mom, and that's always encouraged us to work and study. I learned how to work at the early age. Mom says, hey, wake up. You're sleeping until the sun's come out. Get up, 3 a.m. Mom, is 3 a.m. Come on, let's go, come and help me. Who's gonna help? You're the second oldest. My job was to clean fish uh, after my mom brings the big 200 to 300 pounds of fish and they say you're going to clean the fish while she is also doing all the things without any hair. <laughs> after I finished English, I finished the army, I finished high school and I decided to be a professional official tour guide. So that's why I make a big decision in my life to say, Mom, buy my, my one-way ticket to go to Lima to work and study so hard. But after four years, I came back as official tour guide. Uh, when I was in the training guide school, we have a subject which is a, a Peruvian folklore dance. And that's what I get into dancing on the weekends, Friday night, Saturday night. My dad, when I was a little boy, 11 years old, my dad loved to dance. My dad loved to dance. He always teach me how to dance every place when I was in the community. Said, Edgar, dance like this, dance like that. When I went down there, when I was in Lima, and I just feel like I have the blood of dance. Love to dance. You wanna dance? Huh? You wanna dance? A ver. Salta, salta, ya la 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 I love you. First one, uh, the training to be really healthy, organic stuff.